This is a D-Link Wi-Fi router, specifically an AC1750 rated router, and the model is hopefully somewhere on the box, DIR859. So what we're going to do here is, we're going to take this router just sitting here, we're going to plug it in, we're going to get on the computer and install it so we can get on the internet. Now you may have purchased this router new, you maybe purchased it used. Um, if you had, if you're installing it on a new internet connection, and this is the first time you're installing a router on that connection, then it'll probably be pain free. Uh, but if you're coming to this video because you, you had a router previously working, but you can't seem to get this one to get on the internet, then I may have a trick for you. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's start with, I always like to start with the modem. If you've seen my other videos, you'll see I always start with this red cable right here. The other end is plugged into my modem in the other room. And this end is going to go into the port that's different. It's labeled, what does that say? It says internet and it's yellow. It's different from the other ports. It's always different. Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's yellow. You know it because it's, well, first of all, it's labeled internet and it's always different than the rest of the ports. So that's where the modem goes into. Modem plugs into that port. Nice and warm and fuzzy click that we should get. Yeah, I like that sound. Now once we have that, we're going to use this blue cable that came with the router. And we're going to plug that into one of these ports. It doesn't matter which one. You can use any one you want. I always use number one because that makes sense to me. To always use the first port first. But like I said, it doesn't matter. It's just, I don't know, my personality style or I don't know. I always use the first port. And we're going to plug the other end of that into my computer so we can configure it. Next thing we're going to do is plug in power. Now one thing I really am not a fan of is the power cable. Now I'm plugged in like right here and the power cable literally comes up like up here and around the computer and that's as long as it is and that's kind of annoying to me but that's what we have to work with. So, while I try to, to do two things at once, hold the camera and do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ugh, we're going to plug it in. We're going to try to plug it in. Hold on, let me set the camera down just for a second. I apologize. This seems to be difficult to do. All right. So the first thing I would recommend to do, if, you, if it's a brand new router, you don't need to do this. But if it's something you bought from someone else, uh, second hand, or if you've had settings on there and you don't know what the settings are, I always like to reset the settings. So to do that, there's a little button on the bottom right here, a reset button. And while it's powered on, which you know because the lights are on, while it's powered on, you hit it with a pen or something for seven seconds. One, two, three. Oh, we'll start it over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that will ensure that all the settings are fresh so that when we're installing it, we're not trying to get around settings that we don't want or don't need and are just getting in the way. So while that resets, Let's go over to the computer here, and what we're going to do, oh, one thing to note, if you are having trouble, if you already tried setting this up and you're having trouble getting it on the internet, but you had another router that was working fine, <clears throat> but you can't seem to get on the internet with this, I would recommend going to, you see there's, a, it says Mac ID on the bottom, on the bottom there, that's the Mac address of this router. So I would recommend going to your old router that was working and grabbing the MAC address off that router. It's usually the same thing. Usually they have them on a sticker on the bottom 
Sometimes they have them on the box, if you still have the box. Um, I'm not sure if this one has it on the box or not. Yeah, this one on the box says Mac ID right there. It's the same thing. But it has to be the exact same box that of your router. Because the Mac ID is actually a setting on the router that is put on there. And uh, so I went to my old router. And I wrote down my Mac address because I'm going to need it. Because we're going to use that for a little Mac address cloning or Mac address spoofing kind of tip if you're having trouble getting on the internet. If it's a brand new router and it's a brand new internet connection, you shouldn't even need to worry about that. And if you can't get the Mac address, you shouldn't need to worry about that either because there's still a way around it. But I recommend the Mac address. So let's go ahead. We see we have a little window that popped up here. Let's go ahead and zoom into the computer and teleport into the little tele the computer screen here. All right, now we're in the computer and you'll notice when we zoomed in, there was a little blue box on the right side there. Uh, I wasn't able to start the video without getting rid of that box first. So I just clicked no on that video, I mean on that box. And now we have the desktop screen here. So now what you need to do is open up your favorite browser whether that be, whether that's Chrome, like I have right here, it could be Internet Explorer or whatever browser you want. I'm just going to use Edge down here. So you open it up and continue this page, not recommended. I'm going to click that. And I believe that's going to take me to D Link setup page. Yes, it does. So if that didn't work for you, when you go to the browser, you just want to go up here and you want to go to, I don't know why it says Google, it just didn't change it for some reason. But you just want to go to um, http colon slash slash dlinkrouter.local. So http colon slash slash dlinkrouter.local. Just like that and hit enter. And you should come up with this same page right here. So once we get here, we're going to leave it at the default language, install your device, configure network settings, set up, set your router password. So when this is all said and done, I expect my internet to not be working because I had a router set up previously. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that when we're done. But for some of you, you might be able to just zoom right through this and get on the internet without any problems. So we'll go to next. Detecting internet connection. I expect there to be problems with this part because, okay, please select your internet connection type below. We're going to go with DHCP. If you have, if you have to use one of these other settings, then you know who you are and you know, you should know what the, you should know that you need these. But for all of us, if you don't know, or if you're like the rest of us, you just use DHCP, go to next. So you have two networks that it's setting up for you, the 2.4 gigahertz network and the five gigahertz network. This is gonna be the name of each of your, of your networks. This is your 2.4 gigahertz network name. This is your five gigahertz network name. These are, if you have, if your mobile device supports both, then it'll bring up both. So if you're naming these, make sure you name them so you know which one is 2.4 gigahertz and which one's five gigahertz. So for example, by default, it's D-Link dash C7B0 and the five gigahertz network name is the same thing, but it says five gigahertz at the end. So just usually, usually they'll just, they'll have a name and then the, the five gigahertz will have the number five in it somewhere or say five gigahertz. You can do whatever you want. Just know that if you don't specify at least in one of them, which one is 5 gigahertz or which one is 2.4 gigahertz, it's going to be hard to tell them apart when they're on a list next to each other and you have no way of knowing which one is which. And then, of course, you have your password. I don't know why they use this weird password, but uh, we'll just keep the default and that's what we're going to use. And I'll go to next. Device admin password. I'm just going to go admin123. I recommend you use something better than that, but that's just what I'm going to use for the video. Next, next. So it's got all the information and finish. 
And again, I'm expecting to have issues. So as this counts down, it's possible I didn't hold the button down long enough and it didn't reset my settings because it looks like my internet icon is green and it looked like at that last screen, it looked like everything was all right because it looked like it might have remembered all my settings that I had. Okay, maybe not. Internet is disconnected. So to fix that, we have to figure out how to do MAC address spoofing on here. You might be fine. If you can go up here, you can go to google.com and you can visit. Oh, um, I seem to be on the internet, so why it says that. Oh, I know what's going on. I have my Wi-Fi on. So now that I'm, now that I disabled that, now I should not be able to do this because I'm connected through my router. See, I can't get to it. So we're going to fix that somehow. And it says click to repair. I know what I need to do. We need to do MAC address spoofing. I'm not sure if clicking to repair is going to take us there. I don't know, it thinks we're at Google for some reason. I don't know. We'll just go back to the uh, the configure configuration page. So we're going to tlink router dot local, and the password was admin one two three. So at some we kind of it looks like a, a bug in the browser or something happened before it said Google dot com up here. I don't know why. But, so we're going to click to repair, and hopefully it'll take us to, no, we don't want to do that. We want to look for MAC address spoofing. So let's see, maybe it's an advanced, oh. Um, that doesn't look like it. It's going to be in like internet or WAN settings. Maybe system admin. Let's see. How are we going to get to maybe in that settings right here? Advanced settings, maybe? Okay, MAC address clone. So here is where you're going to want to put in your MAC address of your old router. So how I got there was I went to settings up here. I went down to internet and I clicked on that. And I went to advanced settings right here. So this is gonna bring me to my MAC address clone setting. Now what is this? Okay, it's probably the MAC address of my computer. So I don't wanna use that. So I'm just gonna type it in. This is the Mac, you don't want to type this in because it won't work for you. You want to separate it by colons. So zero, zero, you want to caps lock on, one D colon, seven E colon, zero D colon, E four colon, four D. So that should be a MAC address that's on the bottom of your old router that was working if you had one. Or if you had your computer, if you were on the internet before, but like if you had your computer plugged right into your modem and you didn't have a router at all, then you want to use your computer's MAC address, which you can get right here. You can just click that and it'll transfer it over. But we don't want to do that because I had an old router that was working and this was that router's MAC address. So we're going to save that. And if all is well, that should pretty much fix our internet connection. So if you have like friends or family or anyone that's trying to set up this router and they can't seem to get it online, then you can go in and save the day. Be like, oh, we just need to configure MAC address spoofing or MAC address cloning. Either way, you can call it either one. And you can go in there and put their old router MAC address in there and save the day and make their internet work.
and I'm expecting that it's going to be working after this. So we'll go to the home page. Oh, internet is connected. And we'll go up here. We can go to google.com. And it's working. So let's just kind of look through here and see what the interface is like and what the settings are. Um, so we already went to the internet page. In the advanced settings, you can set up your DNS servers here. Um, wireless settings. You can enable and disable your, your networks. You have two separate networks here. You can rename them. This is the names. And these are the passwords for your Wi-Fi. Remember, your Wi-Fi password is separate from your administrator password. Advanced settings, what's in there? Oh, you can change the security type. You can change all kinds of information in here about your Wi-Fi networks. Uh, what's the network settings? So you can, your IP address and your management. So when, when I type in D-Link router local or D-Link router dot local to get to this page, you can type in whatever you want dot local. So if I, like if I wanted to be, if I wanted to type in uh, route, take off caps lock, router settings dot local, if that's what I wanted to do instead of that, if I couldn't remember that, then I could change that to whatever I want. So that's kind of, kind of useful. But we're not going to do that. Advanced, you have quality of service. There's unsaved data on this page. Do you want to abandon it? Okay. So you got quality of service. So it looks like you just take this. Like this is my computer that's connected to it right now. Looks like you can just drag this into a category here. Well, it's like once it's here, you can't move it. So you just got to remove it and then put it where you want it. And then what else was in here? You got firewall settings. Okay, I don't want to save anything. You can enable a DMZ. All kinds of different stuff in here. IPv4 rules and IPv6 rules. Port forwarding, this is a common thing for gamers or if you have servers, if you want to forward a port to a certain computer. Website filter, so it looks like you can deny or allow access to certain websites, kind of like parental controls. Um, static routes, if you're familiar with routing. Dynamic DNS. If you're not familiar with any of this stuff, you don't really need to change it. But if it's these are kind of advanced settings, so I'm just kind of showing you just to just so you can get see what the interface is like. Uh, you can change your time zone here, your NTP server for time. You got your system log. You can able enable or disable logs. Um, system admin. This is where you change your password to log into this interface. Enable graphical authentication capture. Well, that's kind of cool. I'm going to leave it disabled though. System. What's the system? Save settings, local hard drive, load settings, reboot, restore to factory settings. Just statistics. So it's like you can monitor. Uh, the bandwidth being used at different places and your different Wi-Fi networks, your LAN ports, and pretty much this is total going to the internet and back. So that's just a general walkthrough setting like on this router. It's the D-Link DIR859. I hope it was interesting. I hope you learned something. And I appreciate you watching my video. You have a great day. Peace.